I haven't done one of these in a while. It's been a while since I've answered email. I'm going to, I've got three. Instead of wearing out my fingers and typing all this stuff, I'm just going to answer it in a video. Considering how much you love to see me, I, you know, I got to do a video. I'm running out of ideas here, folks. Now, it's kind of like doing the old Q&As, if you remember, but uh, when I come back, I'm going to answer these three emails. Hey! Oh, rock a cheek. Hello there. This will probably be a fairly short video. One of these emails I'm going to answer. I'm going to hide the name here. It's a very short, very short email. And it saddens me that I really can't help this guy and this is from uh, Alaandra okay and I'm not going to give the last names out of respect and honoring the people's anonymity okay hi my name is Alaandra and I live in California and I have a place in Port Kyle I am I became disabled in the USA are there any benefits in Ecuador for retired disabled people thanks for your videos I got to tell you, I, it really saddens me that I can't answer that. In the first place, I don't know what the extent of your disability is. I don't know if you're in a wheelchair or if you're, you know, what your mobility is, you know. I don't know what your issue is. But I have to say this, I don't see a lot of help for disabled people around here. I was just today. I was driving around and I saw a blue sign that had the symbol of a wheelchair in it. And so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that this was the sign of a wheelchair crossing, okay? But I didn't see any markings on the pavement or anything. That was here in Monta. I don't, I don't know, you know, if what it was. <clears throat> My neighbor across the street that lives in uh, Tori Mirador is in a wheelchair and he has and he drives his own car he has hand controls and he has a handicapped parking spot designated out front for him but you know it's like I posted that video the other day of that ramp that was at La Quadra and they came along and built a concrete wall and I think they did this because of the flooding issues. And it built a concrete wall and it ends, the, the ramp ends in the wall. Just like my hand is the wall and here comes the ramp. And like I said in the video, if, I, I guess if you're in a wheelchair, you have to leap over this wall to get up on the sidewalk. People criticize me for saying, talking like that because I, the topic of the video was lack of common sense. But, you know, in reality, it, it's downright stupid to me. I don't understand why anybody in any country, in any part of this world, would build a concrete wall at the end of a wheelchair ramp. Maybe it's not a wheelchair ramp. Maybe I'm looking just the wrong way. Heaven forbid that I think that the disabled might need some help getting from point A to point B. <clears throat> We're used to the United States where we have a Disabilities Act <clears throat> and there are requirements, there are building codes and requirements. Everybody has to build access for disabled people in the United States. It's the law. Don't have that here. Not that I know of. Somebody, if somebody here knows a, good, a better answer to this question, please speak up. I'm all ears. I'll even do another video about it. And if you're an expert on it, and if you're a verifiable expert on disability benefits in Ecuador, please get in touch with me and let me come interview you because this would be a good topic for discussion. Now, I'm sorry, Alejandro, that's the best I've got for you right now, but let me tell you something. I'm not giving up. Okay, I'm going to find out everything I can. I'm going to keep this email. 
I just have this printed because I'm, it's easier for me to to read off this paper in a video than off my computer screen. But I'm going to keep this and I'm going to find out for you, okay? That's my promise to you. All right? Second email. <clears throat> this is from Bruce. Bruce W. Okay? I'm going to read it a little bit. It's, 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 uh, I'm going to hide his name there, but see, it's fairly long, so I'm going to read this to you. I have to say that I genuinely enjoy your presentations. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, no, it's okay. <laughs> Some, you never know when the crowd's going to perk up, you know. They wake up. We should try that in a restaurant somewhere. Anyway, I particularly appreciate your direct and no-nonsense style. I have learned quite a bit and am interested in moving to Cuenca. If I may be presumptuous, I hope for some advice regarding my situation to help with my planning. So Bruce goes on to say, First, I am almost 66 years old, in good health, require no medications, and retiring and retired living on Social Security. My monthly income from Social Security is $1,672 per month. My discretionary income from Social Security hovers around $1,400 per month as I have Medicare costs that are taken from my base income. I don't know any way around that. Well, I do, and I'll cover that in just a minute. I have two small dogs that I need to have with me. Yeah, Bruce, we, we don't have enough dogs here in Ecuador, so bring yours, okay? Sorry, folks, I, I know that's not, I know that sounds insensitive, but it's, it's, every time I hear about people bringing their dogs here, I, I cringe because there are so many wild dogs running around, especially in Cuenca. It's, I just don't think it's a good idea, and I love dogs. Don't, don't get on that bandwagon, folks, and start bitching at me and saying that I'm insensitive and I don't like pets and animals and I love all pets, you know. See, there's Mr. Parker, he's my little tiger. You sit right up there, you just, you just keep an eye on things, all right? So, but I say that with peace and love. There's so many dogs here, but I know, I understand. You need your dogs, I understand, I understand. Settle down, everybody, settle down. I intend to sell everything that I have and move to Cuenca with my two dogs by November 1st of 2023. I currently live in Capitan, New Mexico, and I am pleased with my and I'm not pleased with my with living here. I don't like the weather and the cost of living is higher than I want to afford. This leaves me isolated with few options and very little joy. I hear you, Bruce. I don't want a clue I don't have a clue as to how to go about this. So, well, I'll go ahead and finish reading. I assume that I need to fly into Ecuador somewhere with my pets and find some sort of temporary residence that will accept my pets. That is basically the long and short of it. I do understand that a retirement visa is easy to acquire and that the process is fairly straightforward. Renting a small house with a yard would be ideal for my pets as well as the fact that I'd like to do some gardening as a hobby. Please, if you could provide some sort of direction or series of steps to take it, to take it would be greatly appreciated. I am trying to avoid making anything in the way of very serious mistakes. Thanks in advance. If you can find time to provide something in the way of direction, none of this is easy for me, so I would certainly be in your debt. It's, Bruce, it's my pleasure. Oh, boy, where do I start? I'm going to start with your first sentence there. I don't have a clue as to how to go about this. Let me tell you something. <laughs> you are not alone, okay? Everybody's been in those, your shoes, myself included. But, Bruce, I have 276 videos posted on my channel, okay, that details practically every step I took to get here. And everything I did, and who I talked to, and who I used for this and that, and so forth. One of the most important videos, I think, that I did for somebody like you, for you to start with, and I'm going to put a link to it in the description, okay, is my checklist. Read, do the video, 
and get the checklist. I have a link to it in the Google Docs. If I don't, when I'm through this video, I'll make sure I got one in there. And print that checklist out and hang it on your wall and live by that checklist while you're getting yourself together. You know, and prepare for coming down here. It, that, to me, is the most... It, you, you have to be organized, folks. you got to be organized. Number one, get the checklist. Number two, get your documentation in order. Okay? Get all your documentation in order. If you know... That if, I hope that you've talked to an immigration lawyer by now. If you haven't, you better. Okay? Don't think you're going to come here and hire some facilitator, you know, for cheap money to go out and get your visa for you. That's just dumb. Don't, please don't do that. Hire an immigration lawyer. Whether it's Gringo Visas, Equa Assist, there's another lady in Quinka, now I can't think of her name. You talk to all of them. Talk to all of them and figure out which one you like and go with them. Okay? They all have their pluses and minuses, all right? But the important thing is get that checklist and start living by that checklist. All right? Second thing, coming to Ecuador with your pets is no big deal. But you, you've heard what I expressed about how I feel about people bringing dogs here. It's, there, folks, there are dogs everywhere. And everybody's got dogs. And, and I understand. I mean, I wish I had one. I did a video where I kept Gracie here for three weeks, and I cried like a four-year-old when I had to give her back to Mike because I, I, I miss her. And every time I see her now, it's like a big reunion, and it's like, you know, I get to see her a lot. I have visitation rights. But, but you know, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying don't bring your dogs and don't, and I'm not criticizing you for wanting to bring your dogs, but I just want you to know that there's a lot of dogs here. And when you take your little pooches out from go for a walk, you're definitely going to have to keep them on a leash, and you're definitely going to have to keep an eye and your head on a swivel because other dogs will come after yours. Okay? There's always that chance. The very first day that I was in Monta, the very first day, I got bit on my butt by a dog. And it wasn't even a wild dog. The owner stood there and looked at me like a dumbass and, you know, didn't do anything. So, I mean, that dog, there is no shortage of dogs here. But anyway, you won't have any trouble getting your dogs in here, okay? He says... I do understand that a retirement visa is easy to require, acquire and that the process is very straightforward. You're right. You know, in your retirement, if you want to get a retirement visa, like a pensioner's visa, they have all kinds of visas here, but to get your, you know, retirement, your pensioner's visa, all you need is proof of income, show your 12 months worth of bank statements, maybe only six months, to show that you've been getting this income. Now, you said you're... 66, I don't know when you started drawing Social Security, but you're going to have to have some record to prove that you have income and that you've been getting income and you're going to have it when you're here. Okay? And then, of course, you have to do your background checks, your FBI report, and you want all that stuff together by the time you come here. Okay? Renting a small house, this is part of it. Renting a small house with a yard would, I be, would be ideal for my pets as well as the fact that I like to do some gardening as a hobby. You're picking a good spot to go, Cuenca. You'll, you won't have any trouble finding that little house out in the country, close to town. I have a friend that's in Cuenca, well, I have an acquaintance. I haven't even had the pleasure of meeting this lady, but she's, she lives in Cuenca. She lives in a little house on some acreage, and she said it's a 50 cent bus ride to downtown Cuenca. She's got a yard, she's got like, like a three-bedroom house, and so I think she said she paid $350 a month for it. You know, now there's your, you, you got that, that's a per, that opportunity exists for you, especially up in Cuenca. Don't come to Monta thinking that you're going to get that, because it's a completely different world in Monta. But in Cuenca, Cotacachi, Loja, any of those Andes little towns, you'll be able to find a house and have a yard and plant a garden 
have a place for your dogs to run and play, and it'll be perfect. Okay, so I hope that answers your questions. Bruce, if you have any more questions, feel free to write to me. And if you, well, you did write to me. So if you want to talk, you know, write back to me, give me your phone number, and I'll call you. Okay, I'll call you on my Google Voice number, and we can chat as long as you want to. On to the third one, the last email, okay? Uh, this is from Ida R. Hello, my name is Ida, and my hubby and I have been watching your videos since you started your move. We are starting our move to Ecuador next month, June, and we'd like to know if you also use Gringo Visa for your transition. We have contacted them. However, the response time is very slow. Did you experience the same issue when you were trying to get all your things done? Did you find... Did you do the fingerprinting and background checks and all the office still paperwork yourself? Or did you have someone come to help you with this as well? If you have time and can reply, we would honestly appreciate a response. Well, here's your response. Yes, I, I'm sorry to hear that your response time from Gringo Visa is slow. I just, I forwarded your email to Mate, okay? Uh, Mate likes to know about stuff like this. Mate Gringo Visa is a very busy immigration office. They have offices in Cuenca and here in Monta, as are all of the immigration services. They, they, there are a lot of people coming here from all over the world. And sure, they're, they're, they're overwhelmed sometimes with work. But be vigilant and stay after them, write to them. If you just like feel like banging your head against the wall, write to me again and I'll put in a call for you, okay? I have a little a little pull with Maite. I don't know if that's really the right word to say. But I have a good relationship with Maite, and she, when people write to me and, and say that they're not getting what they think they should be getting, I would usually let it be known to Maite and on your behalf, okay? Uh, to, to, I did the fingerprinting. I went to an employment verification office in Mesa, Arizona, the they did the electronic thumb, you know, fingerprints, and that went directly to the FBI. And by the time I got home, I had an email copy of my FBI report. Now let me go on to say that that is not good enough to submit to immigration. You have to have the actual FBI report that they will mail to you, and that's what will be apostilled at the U.S. Department of State. I had all my paperwork done, and I sent it all off myself, okay? I didn't hire anybody to do it. If there, the, let's see, your income verification, if it's coming from Social Security, and your FBI background check have to be apostilled at the U.S. Department of State in Virginia. You can go to their website. I'll put a link to it in the description, and you can... You can get all the information you need, the address to send it to, how much it's going to cost. There's a form, a couple of forms you can fill out, and you can put it in, a, in an envelope, put a self-addressed stamped envelope inside, and put your check in there, send it off yourself. Sorry, Maite, but I'm telling Ida, don't pay somebody over $100 to do this for you. It's easy to do yourself. As far as your state background check and all that stuff, you have to go to your secretary of state for your state and do that there. In my case, I could walk into the office in Phoenix and do it myself. Again, if you want to talk about this, send me an email, give me your phone number, and I'll call you. I'll tell you exactly how I did it and how it worked for me. I do have to say this. The time is of the essence with the FBI report. It can't be more than six months old. It can't be more than six months old. Okay? It cannot be more than six months old by the time it gets to immigration office and start the application process. So don't waste your time with that. Get it done and get it sent. Okay? Now, I what I did, because we were right in the heart of the pandemic when I did all of my apostille paperwork, okay? I, I didn't get my stuff from the U.S. Department of State back in time for me to bring it with me when I came to Ecuador. It, it came to my resident in Phoenix, 
my friends DHL'd it to me and it cost me $107 two years ago. It cost me $107 to have those documents sent to me here in Monta via DHL. If you have to have documentation sent down here, do not, and I'm going to spell that, D-O not, N-O-T, do not use FedEx, okay, period. Don't use FedEx, use DHL. You'll thank me later, okay. We would love to treat you and Stella to dinner when we arrive. Well, well I tell you what, we would love that too, okay. And if we're available and we are, you know, well, if we're available, we'll be happy to, okay. Most of the time we are. So that's it, folks. I hope I answered your questions. If I didn't, I'm just doing a double check here, make sure I didn't leave anything out. I'm sorry you're having this slow response time from Gringo Visa, but I sent her a nice little reminder, okay? And, and I forwarded your email to her. So let me know if you don't get any results, okay? That's it, folks. Thanks for watching my channel. If you like this channel, Please subscribe. If you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, bite me. And I say that with peace and love. See you on the next one. Ciao, ciao. Dad. Yeah. Can I walk to Chad's house? Sure, but that's a rough neighborhood, so you remember, if anyone offers you drugs, you say... I am down how much for crack? No, no, you are not down. I am not down with any of your crack. If a stranger asks you to get in his van, you say... On my way! No, nope, not right. Stranger danger. Yeah, that's what I meant. What if a stranger pulls up on you with his car, he's like, Hey, I can't find my dog. Can you get in to help me search for my dog? This one's easy. Okay. You help him find that fucking dog. Nope. Right, right, right. Fuck that dog. What if someone offers you candy? I'll take my shirt off for a Snickers. Okay, I'm thinking maybe I should just drive. So don't take my shirt off for a Snickers.